Hi, I'm Cliff in 4CCB. In this video, I want to talk about the LNR Precision Mountain Topper Radio. This is an amazing little QRP radio that's designed by Steve Weber. You may know Steve Weber from his uh, ATS series of radios, the Appalachian Trail Sprint, and also the MTR, the Mountain Topper Radio. LNR Precision is assembling the little Mountain Topper Radio and selling them. Now, they're almost always out of stock as of the time of this recording. And uh, as soon as they have some in stock, they sell out quickly. So uh, it may take them a while to try to catch up with the backlog, but uh, just persevere and go to their website. I was lucky enough to get one of the last ones for 2016, 2015, excuse me. So uh, I've had it for about 10 days. I've taken it out three times to work portable, and I've had a blast with it. It's so much fun. Uh, so let's take a look. Inside this pouch is the radio, an 8 AA battery pack, an Elecraft T1 tuner, a palm paddle, a mini paddle, uh, some headphones, some adapters, and other doodads. So everything except the wire antenna is right here. So let's open it up. T1 tuner. If you have a resident antenna like a dipole that's been cut to the, you know, whatever band you want to work, you won't need a tuner. So one less thing to carry. One less thing to carry. Um, my battery pack. Now I've got a, a jack soldered on here to these wires. This is the same jack that a FT817 Yezu radio takes. It's like 1.7 millimeter pin by four millimeter uh, diameter. Um, so exactly the same plug as an FT817 uses. And by the way, my batteries are nickel metal hydride, 2700 milliamps. Um, I get about 11 volts initially when I charge this and it works just great. Um, very happy with the battery life and the three watts out that I get using that. Okay, my Palm Mini Paddle, nothing special there. Okay, here's the radio. Now, how amazing is that? Look how small that is. I don't have huge hands, but look how small this radio is compared to my hand. Put it in this camera so you can see a little better. It's just incredible. The actual size of this thing is the size of a deck of playing cards. It only weighs 4.4 ounces, and it's got three bands, 40, 30, and 20 meters, built-in keyer, digital display, uh, it puts out, mine puts out three watts. Uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's just so cool, so tiny. Um, and the, you know, the reason I like that is because I keep wanting to get my, my setup smaller and smaller to make it easier to carry things with me so that I'll always have a little radio with me if I get a, an hour or two and just want to work portable outside or at lunch or whatever. So this, is, this just fills the bill, man. This is just really great for that. So I'm going to uh, talk to you about some of the things on the case, and then we're going to hook it up to my uh, antenna over here, my little ham shack behind me, and I'll let you hear what it sounds like, and I'm going to show you how to work this thing. I'm not going to show you every single possible feature, but I'm going to show you most of them. And by the time we're done, you're going to know how to work this and you're going to want one badly. I promise. So let's get started. You can see that there are no knobs on the front of this radio. So there's no volume knob. Well, that's kind of weird, right? Well, what, what, what Steve Weber did is that he limited the audio so it can only ever be so loud. And for those of you who haven't lost all your hearing yet, uh, I've got some hearing loss myself. Uh, the radio is actually louder than you probably want it to be. It depends on the headphones you're using. If you're using uh, headphones with a certain impedance, maybe it's too loud. Maybe it's too soft, but it just depends on your situation. Now, what I've done is I've just bought a little inline volume control. Uh, this is made by Koss, K-O-S-S. -S. I bought it on Amazon.com for six bucks or so, I think. Uh, it's got a 3.5 millimeter jack that you plug your headphones into. The other end you plug into the radio, and then there's an inline volume control that you can just turn to make the radio volume lower. Works great for me and my earbuds that I use. If you've got uh, over the head headphones, you know, with the band that goes over your head, you could easily just kind of slide the, slide the pads off your ears a little bit if you come across a station that's too loud. So that's also a, a possible workaround. But the lack of volume is not an issue. If anything, there's an abundance of volume, which you can easily remedy with that. 
Okay, um, let's look at the jacks on the back of this thing. It is a trail-friendly radio, so you can hold it in your hand, and all the controls are right here. And on the jack, on the jacks on the back, starting from this side, there is the headphone jack, the paddle jack, the DC input jack, 6 volts to 12 volts max. So don't try to put a 13.8 volt power source to this or you'll damage it. Um, and then the antenna jack. Now, this is an RCA jack, which is kind of strange, right? You don't normally see an RCA jack on a radio. But this rig is all about size and weight. And the RCA jack was very small and would easily fit uh, on the board and fit in this case really well. It's not an issue that it's an RCA jack because you can buy adapters. I've got a couple here. You'll notice that both of these are male RCA on one side. This one is BNC, female, and this one is an SO239. So if you have an antenna um, or coax for your antenna that's got a BNC male or a PL259, these little adapters will have them work just fine. So having the volume knob is not an issue. There's an easy workaround. Having the RCA jack is not an issue. Easy to get these adapters. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about the interface before we actually get into it. There's a little diagram that I've cut out of, I, I printed the, the manual and cut out this little diagram, shrunk it down to where it would fit on top of the radio. They recommend you uh, print it out and put it on the back of the radio, but it just seems more convenient to me to have it here. This little diagram might look a little confusing to you. Don't know if this camera can even show that to you in focus, but there are only four knobs, four buttons at the bottom of this radio. And they all do something if you press them once. They do something else if you hold them down. And if you press one and then press another switch, it does something else. Now that sounds horrible, right? That sounds like there's no way you can get your head around that. Well, I'm here to tell you that it absolutely is easy. And this little diagram makes perfect sense once you read the manual and once you learn what these four buttons are. There's only four buttons. How complicated can it be? Um, but it's easy to get your head around and the diagram completely takes the mystery out of it. And uh, with that, let's connect the thing up over here and tune around a little bit and I'll show you the user interface and how you can do some things with it. So let's take a look. Okay, to start you can see that there are three switches on the left hand side. All three of those switches are always supposed to be in the same position. So. Uh, if their switches are all set on the far left, you're on 40 meters. If all three switches are set to the center position, you're on 30 meters. And if the switches are flipped to the right, which they are now, we're on 20 meters. So when we turn the radio on, we're going to be on 20 meters. And you're going to see a 2 show up here in the digital display to represent 20 meters. If we had been on 30 meters, we'd see a 3. And if we'd been on 40, we'd see a 4. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio on, and you'll see the 2 right here. Okay, so the radio is on, we're on 20 meters, and there's a default frequency that is set for all three bands. And you can change that, but by default, it takes you to the QRP watering hole frequencies on all three of these bands. So to find out what frequency you're on, just press the function key, FN. It's gonna show you one digit at a time, and it's gonna play those digits in a Morse code also. By the way, you can turn off the Morse code enunciation if you want to. It does leave off the first digit. So we know we're on 20 meters. We know that the first is gonna be 14 megahertz. So it just leaves that out. Same thing for 10 meter, or 30 meters. It, you know, it would normally show 10 megahertz there and 40 meters it would normally show seven megahertz. In all cases, it just leaves that off and starts with the digit that follows the megahertz. So I'm gonna press FN to see what frequency we're on, on 20 meters. 14.060. Point zero. So it shows four digits. The last one has a little dash that represents the second decimal before the hertz value. So uh, to, to see what frequency you're on, you just tap function. To raise the frequency by 50 hertz or lower it by 50 hertz, you use the up and down arrow buttons. So every time I tap this down arrow button, it's dropping the the VFO by 50 Hertz. If I hold it down, I'll be stepping through 
100 hertz 10 times a second or about 1k per second and i'm going to go ahead and just hold down the down arrow key and we'll see if we hear anybody talking well for the sake of continuing on i won't continue to, to hold this down it takes a little bit of time to step through all these now there is a direct frequency uh, entry function i'll show you that in just a minute but you can jump to a particular frequency without having just to hold the button down for a couple of minutes to step through the band. So I've showed you that just tapping function tells you the current frequency. Tapping up or down raises or, or decreases the frequency by 50 hertz and holding it down steps through 10 times a second 100 hertz or 1k per second. Now there's a, another button here in the middle that's marked KM or RIT. If you press that button the radio expects you to follow up by pressing one of the other three buttons, which represents a memory. So if I've programmed in CQ or my call sign or whatever, I can press this second button followed by whichever of these three buttons represents the message that I want to play. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just play the second one. I'm going to hit this. So it just played my call sign. Somebody out there listening might be kind of confused to hear somebody just give their call sign all of a sudden. Sorry about that. Um, but that's how that, so, so now you know what all four buttons do if just tapped. And you know what these two buttons do if you hold them down, the up arrow and down arrow key. Well, it, with there is an RIT mode, and let me uh, show you that. It would be nice if I could find a station that was actually talking right now. Okay, there's kind of a quiet station. Okay, let's say that uh, I'm having a QSO with them and they're not on my pitch. I can hold down RIT until I hear the letter R, and then I can use up and down arrows to, to change the, you know, use the receiver incremental tuning to change my receive VFO to something different. So here I go, I'm gonna hold this down, you'll hear an R. goes back to a zero in the display when I'm back at the initial frequency. I'm going to get rid of RIT by holding it down again. Okay, now it just exited that. I'm going to get off this frequency so it's not distracting me while I'm talking. So that's how our RIT works. It's really simple. And uh, uh, to, to change the Morse code speed, by default it's set to 20 words a minute, although you can change what the default is, and we'll get to that in just a second. But the function key here, if you hold it down, you'll hear the letter S. By holding it down till you hear the S, you have the ability then to either press the down arrow or up arrow repeatedly to increment or decrement the words per minute. You can also use your paddle. The, the dot uh, left side of the paddle will decrease the words per minute by one every time you touch it, and the dash side of the paddle will increase by one every time you touch it. So by default it comes up for 20 words a minute. If you want to set it for 15 words a minute, you just do this. I just pushed it five times down. So now when I push this and hold it again, you'll hear that the letter S is slower. Okay, so now I'm at 15 words a minute. Now, I told you a while ago that by default it comes up with the frequencies of the QRP watering hole. It also comes up with the default uh, 20 words per minute, and it also has the default of, of, of playing Morse code whenever it announces a digit. You can change those parameters and then save the configuration, overriding the existing configuration, so that the next time you turn the radio on, it'll come up with what your defaults are. So it's really simple. You don't have to save each one of these individually. You just put the radio however you want it and then just save the configuration, and next time you turn it on, it'll come up like that. Okay. Um, Let's talk about how to check your battery level. Well, you saw a while ago that by pressing this button, the KM RIT button, and then touching one of these other buttons, it did something. In this case, it played back a, a memory, uh, you know, a string that we had programmed in there earlier. Well, functions like that too. If I press function and then one of these three buttons, 
it's going to do something. And the way that you find out uh, what your battery voltage is, is to press function and then the up arrow. So here I go. So the radio played B to let me know I'm in battery mode. And then it displayed one zero and then the hyphen for the, for the decimal uh, and then a six. So I'm at 10.6 volts right now with my battery pack. Now, why does it do the hyphen instead of the decimal? Well, it's because the radio uses the decimal as a power on indicator. So every time you normally would get a decimal, the radio shows you the hyphen instead. Okay, so that's what happens when you press function and up arrow, it shows you the battery voltage. Pressing function and down arrow will uh, let you tune the radio. It'll, it'll let you send a carrier. So I'm gonna do that. You see a T and you heard a T. And now if I touch the left-hand side of the paddle, it's gonna send a carrier. And if I touch the right-hand side, it stops. And it'll remain in this mode until I press the function key. Okay, that's easy enough, right? All right, and the third option after pressing the function, this button will go into direct frequency mode. So I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna set our frequency, let's say to uh, 14. 0570. So the first thing I do is touch this, then that. In Morse code it plays DFE and you'll notice that the radio's receiver is silenced. So I'm going to type in 0. T is a shortcut for that. And now a 5. And then let's say a 7. And now another 0. Okay, now the radio reads it back to me. and takes me there. So now if I push the function key to see what frequency I'm on, you'll see that I'm on 14.057. So it makes it really easy to change frequencies and not have to rely on scanning up and down the band. Okay, uh, really the, the last thing I wanna show you here is how to program frequencies because this is confusing. This is confusing to me and I actually made a video earlier on the mountain topper and I got this wrong and so I screwed that up so much that I decided to record it again so that I could get this right for you. But the way this works is when you go into the memory entry mode, it lets you start keying in your characters. But it is very particular about the timing of each character and the timing between words. It's not just like a tape recorder recording uh, everything that you do. Instead, it expects these things to be in certain time slots. And what you'll see on the screen here is that after you enter a character, when the right amount of time has passed, you'll see a little flash on the top left-hand side of the segment. And if you pause long enough, when it's a word size pause, you'll see a flash on the top right. So I'm going to enter my call sign in twice with a space between the two, and you'll kind of see how this works. So to go into the memory mode, I'm going to hold function. You're going to hear the S for Morse code, and then I'm going to keep holding it. And then you're going to see the letter N, which the manual says is as close as they could get to the letter M for memory. And then uh, we'll go from there. So here we go. There's the S. Okay, now I let go when it said N. Now we're in memory mode. The receiver is silenced, and it's waiting for me to use the key to, to key in something. I notice that after I key in a letter, I wait till I see it flash before I move on. So here comes N4CCB. Now here's a long pause. Okay, I'm done. So at this point, I'm gonna press FN to listen back. Okay, great. Since I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna tap the button that I want to, to play that message back. So I'm gonna use the down arrow, and it says R for Roger. And now I'm exited out of that mode. So now when I touch this RIT uh, memory button, followed immediately by the down arrow, you could hear my call sign. Well, I hope you saw those flashing because that's the key to everything, and it's a little tedious. If you try to program a long message like CQ, 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 day N4 CCB, N4 CCB, uh, if you don't if you don't get it right, uh, you can easily just just abort 
by pressing the, the KMRIT button again, and it'll, it'll play EM, meaning enter message, and you can start over again. But that did throw me the first time, and uh, since chances are pretty good you're smarter than I am, uh, you'll have no issue with it, but uh, now you understand how to do it. Uh, so it shouldn't be an issue for you. Well, uh, there are a few other things that this thing can do, the radio can do. Uh, you can put it in straight key mode by inserting the straight key with a mono plug, or you can just hold the right, uh, the, the DA paddle, the dash side of the paddle when you turn the radio on, it'll go into straight key mode, in which case now the dot side of the paddle can just be touched like a straight key. So if you're like a SKCC member and you want to use this radio with a paddle for straight key work, you can do it that way. Um, there's a few other things in the manual that I don't really feel like are important to you uh, to, to just kind of gain an appreciation of how to use the radio. But you, you really now know everything you need to know about how to use this radio. And, uh, and I hope that uh, hope you've seen that it's not that hard to use and that it's, uh, it's a cool little radio. I guess before I go, I'm going to go find us a station so we can listen to it a little bit and uh, maybe give you a chance to kind of hear how the radio sounds. Okay, there's a station talking right underneath the frequency we're on now. I'm going to start scrolling down and you'll hear it. Okay. So it doesn't go so fast that you can't hear it. It doesn't go by so fast that you'll skip over it. You go down past it and then work your way back up to it. Now, how do I know what my side tone pitch is so that I can zero beat this station? Well, I can just hold this down to find out what the Morse code speed is. That da, 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 happens to be the side tone pitch. Well, because this radio is limited to 50 hertz steps, I can't exactly zero beat the station, but I can get within 25 hertz of it, which is plenty close enough. So if I go too high, now I'm actually, he's above where my side tone pitch is, where my offset is, but if I take it down the other way, now I'm above where he is. So in this case, I can't exactly zero beat him, but I can get awfully close and plenty close enough uh, for the intentions of the station. But you can see it's got a good receiver. The signals kind of jump out. It's got about a 500 hertz filter applied to it. And it's just a, it's just a neat little radio, guys. It's just kind of a pleasure to use. It's so, it's so small that it just makes it fun. And uh, anyway, I think that's about all I need to show you and uh, appreciate you watching this. Really cool little rig. I, I hope by now you've seen how enthusiastic I am about it and uh, how easy it is to use. And, uh, and I hope you want one because uh, I really want us all to support Steve Weber and the LNR Precision people uh, who are making this available to us all. You know, you can buy this as a kit. And uh, the problem is it uses surface mount parts. So unless you have a, a microscope or serious magnifying lens and steady hands, and solder paste and maybe a reflow workstation. It's very difficult to make one of these things uh, without having that extra gear uh, and, uh, and patience. So I'm just tickled that uh, LNR Precision is selling these for 250 bucks and uh, that I can get one and go have fun with it. So I think that's about it. If you have any questions about this radio, uh, feel free to drop me uh, uh, a question in the comments. I'll be happy to do whatever uh, I, I can do to help you with it. But I think you're really going to love it, and I encourage you to uh, pick one up. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. So I guess that's it. Thanks for watching.